Now I talked about the rules for exponents, so let's go ahead and review the rules for exponents, uh, you know, especially with rational exponents, so that you can at least uh, remember these when you start solving more problems in this section. Now the rules for your rational exponents will go ahead and assume that these exponents r and s are rational numbers, which means they're fractions. And we're saying all these bases, um, a and b, are also real numbers. So anytime you have the same base that you're multiplying together with different exponent. So you can see you have the same base, different exponents, and you're multiplying these expressions together, you go ahead and add your exponents. The base stays the same, you just add your exponents r plus s. We talked about a negative exponent. If you have a to the negative r, you want to make that exponent positive, put it in the denominators, you put it as 1 over a to the r. Okay, we already talked about this. This one, we've applied this rule also. If you have a to the r and the whole thing to the s, so basically one exponent and then another, in this situation, you multiply the two exponents, r times s. Notice this is different. Number 3 is different from number 1. In the first one, you're multiplying the bases, okay? That's where you add the exponents. In the third one, you are, you have one power to another power. In this case, you multiply the exponents. It's the same base, just one base, and you're multiplying the exponents, okay? All right, let's take a look at rule number four. This was the one that we just did in our last example. In rule number four, we are saying if you are dividing the same base and they have different exponents, you go ahead and subtract the exponents. Okay, so a to the r divided by a to the s will give you a to the r minus s. Okay? And you will notice your r and s could have been any real number and these rules would still have applied. In this case, we're just talking about them specifically for rational exponents. Now this is a pretty neat um, rule here. If you have a and b, two numbers that you're multiplying together, and the whole expression is to some exponent r, it almost works like a distributive property for exponents where this exponent r applies to the base a, as you can see a to the r, and that exponent applies to base b, which gives you b to the r. You're still multiplying the two bases, except they're two different bases, and the exponent will apply to both of them. This is another interesting property here. You have the expression a over b, and the whole thing to the negative r, uh, negative r exponent. To make this a positive exponent, what you can do is invert your base here. Instead of a over b, make it b over r, and you go ahead and distribute that r on your denominator and numerator. It's kind of following from um, rule 7 here. You can see you have a over b to the r, and this exponent distributes over the division. So you have a to the r over b to the r. So that's the same thing what 6 is saying, except when you have a negative exponent, you invert your base and make it b over a. All right, your last rule for exponents is a to the negative r, which is quite similar to rule number 2 that we just talked about here. Okay, your rule number 2 was make it 1 over a to the r. You can also rewrite this as 1 over a, okay, and make that a positive r as well, okay? So they're a little bit different, but they will give you the same answer, okay? Now, the idea behind these rules of exponents is you apply them as you solve problems, and it doesn't really matter which property you apply when, as long as you can use it and come up with the right answer, you know, try and experiment with these different rules and see what you can come up with. So we'll look at some basic examples here on how to uh, apply these rules of exponents to our examples. We'll start with something simple. This is following from your first rule. 
which said if you have the same base and you're multiplying them together, you add your exponents. So this will give you 6 4 thirds plus 2 thirds. Okay? Same base, you're multiplying, so go ahead and add the exponents. And as you can see, you already have the same denominator in both of them, so you don't have to worry about finding the least common denominator. Go ahead and add your exponents, which will give you 4 plus 2, 6, over the same denominator of 3. And of course, you can go ahead and reduce 6 over 3 into 2, so that will give you 6 to the second power. And as we know, that value will be 36. Okay, so you started out by applying the first rule, which was add the exponents when you're multiplying the same base. Now, since we ended up with 6 over 3 and we could reduce that, we reduced it into 6 squared, and then 6 squared gives you 36. Okay, this one is um, rule number 4, I think, where we talked about if you are dividing the same base, you go ahead and subtract your exponent, so this will give you 125 to the 7 thirds minus 5 thirds. Again, in this example, it's pretty simple for us. You have the same denominator, so you can go ahead and s subtract your numerator, so that will give you 7 minus 5, which is 2, and you end up with 125 to the 2 thirds. Now try and see if you can simplify this any further. And if I want, I can write this as 125 to the 1 third, and then the whole thing to the second power, okay? Uh, if you take cube root of 125, the square on the outside, cube root of 125 is 5, okay? And then the square on the outside will, of course, give you... 25 as your answer. So just because we're talking about rules of exponents doesn't mean you cannot go further and simplify these and try and see if you can come up with a nice clean answer. Okay, now we're taking a little bit of a different uh, turn here on our examples. Instead of using numbers, we're using the variable z here. So how do you go ahead and solve a problem like this? You have z to the 3 fourths over z to the 5 fourths times z to the negative 2. Let's go ahead and simplify our denominator first. Okay, so we'll keep our numerator the same. Denominator, again, you're multiplying the same base, z times z, so you can go ahead and add the exponents which will give you 5 fourths plus negative 2. Okay, go ahead and add 5 fourths and negative 2 and see what you end up with. Now in this case, you will have to find a common denominator. Here your denominator is 4. Here your denominator is 1. So before you can add them, you need to have the same denominator, which will give you Let's see, I'll multiply this whole expression by 4, so negative 2 times 4 will give you negative 8. 1 times 4 is, of course, 4. Now that you have the same denominator, add your numerators and see what you end up with. Again, the numerator of the expression stays the same. 5 plus negative 8 will give us negative 3 over 4. Okay, now you can see we have simplified our denominator, so now we're ready to combine the whole expression. Now this again is your rule 4 where you're dividing the same base, so you can go ahead and subtract your exponents. Now here be a little careful because it's going to be very easy to uh, ignore this negative sign here. If this were positive 3 fourths, you would end up with 3 fourths minus 3 fourths, right? But since you have that negative sign, you should end up with two negatives, one for the subtraction of exponents and one from the negative here in your denominator. 
Go ahead and combine the two exponents together, which will give you 3 fourths. Negative and negative will become positive. Okay, so you actually end up adding the two exponents here and you have the same basis so you can go ahead and add the numerators which will give you z 3 plus 3 of course is 6 over 4 now you can go ahead and reduce 6 over 4 into 3 over 2 and that will be your final answer okay so even though something looks you know complex or really hard it's not if you try and break it down step by step and you can see we ended up with a pretty nice answer here of z uh, to the three halves okay let's look at another example here this one is a little bit different as you can see you have fourth root of cube root of m. So you have two roots here, two radicals. How do you go ahead and solve something like this? Now, let's leave the fourth root on the outside as it is. All right, so go ahead and ignore that for now. And let's just look at cube root of m here. Okay, so we're not interested in the outer root cube root of m, go ahead and write that as a rational exponent, so that will give you m, your exponent is 1, your index is 3, so go ahead and write that as a rational exponent, and you'll end up with fourth root of m to the one-third power. Now do the exact same thing with the fourth root. Now treat this whole thing as your base, okay, so m to the one-third will be your base, and write the fourth root as a rational exponent. So again, that will become 1 over 4. Okay? Once you do this, where you convert both these radicals into rational exponents, go ahead and apply your rules for exponents, which was, let me find that one for you. This was rule number 3, where we said if you have two exponents, a to the r to the s, you multiply a times s, I'm sorry, r times s, so that's the same thing you're going to do here for this one here, that's what we did. You have one exponent and another, and you can go ahead and multiply the two exponents. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we do that. And this will give you m one-third times one-fourth which will 1 times 1 is 1, 3 times 4 is 12. And that's what you'll end up with, m to the 1 over 12. And if you want, you can rewrite this in rational exponents or as a radical as 12th root of m. So honestly, all you ended up doing was multiplying the two indices, and you ended up with 12 as your answer. Okay, pretty simple, pretty straightforward right there. Now, let's look at another example here, our last example for this. You have square root of y times cube root of yz. How can you multiply these two uh, bases together? They look quite different. Again, go back and convert these into rational exponents. So y, uh, you can write that as y to the one-half for square root of y. For cube root of yz, you can again write that as one-third as your exponent on yz. Okay. Again, from rules of exponents, if you guys remember, I had talked about the property or the rule where you can distribute your exponent. Okay, right here, number 5, when you had a, b, and the whole thing was to the r, you can go ahead and distribute that r over both your bases. That's the same thing we will do here with our y, z. Go ahead and distribute that, and you will end up with y to the 1 half, which stays the same. And this one 
will give you y to the one third and z to the one third. So you basically distribute that exponent over both these bases. Now we can go ahead and combine our y terms. Since you're multiplying the same base, add the exponents. Okay, so again you'll find a common denominator which will be 6. So you multiply the first expression by 3 which will give you 3 6. Multiply the second ex um, exponent by 2 which will give you of course 2 6. Okay, z stays the same. Now you can go ahead and add the exponents which will give you 3 plus 2 is 5. y to the 5 6 and z to the 1 3rd and that will be your answer. So you have to combine your rules for um, exponents to your rational exponents and you can go ahead and solve any of these problems um, however you choose to work with them. Um, okay so this is going to be the end of section 10.2